It's going to take a lot more for a recession in the U.S., right? I mean, data has been pretty strong. Indeed. I, mean, I, I know that historically a curve inversion is broadly viewed by some policymakers and market participants as a recession indicator. For example, in today's case, it's a, it's a hiking cycle causing a recession. However, I mean, the shape of the curve itself is actually not a very good indicator of near-term returns. I mean, in fact, risk assets has done really well uh, from anywhere from six months to two years after an inversion. However, what a flat or inverted curve does indicate is that there is a less cushion from a monetary perspective. So that doesn't mean that investors should go and run and hide from uh, taking risks or risky assets. But investors should be aware that the tail risks are elevating and volatility is going to pick up. You probably be a little bit careful where you take risks. The thing is, Jenny, more and more Fed officials are calling for a back-to-back -back 50 basis point hike. Is the market ready for that? Can the market cope with that? The more and more market participants at the sell side buy side are actually revising their expectations of a 50 basis points, points hike in the next meeting. Now, the Fed is, is starting from a different point this time. This is the previous cycle that the our inflation is high and it's not going to come down in the near term. So it raises the risk that the Fed indeed hikes to a recession, um, that they are running um, because they're running uh, at their inflation mandate, right? So, but I do think the the market is is prepared for that. I, I wouldn't think that the market will be surprised by a 50 basis points hike. Jenny, the thing is, they are also got the other mandate, which is growth, and they're favoring inflation. Now, where we are right now in terms of average mortgage rates in the U.S., we're looking at about 4.9 percent for 30-year mortgages. If we see this even elevate further, I mean, 4.9 is perhaps even a pain threshold. We could see people not being able to keep up payments. And that could create this horrible negative feedback loop, and that is where a recession could come from. What are your, do you think that's the main fear? There are a lot of other indicators we can look at in the U.S. economy. For example, if you look at the ISM or the PMI numbers, remains pretty solid, and job numbers remains very solid, in fact, and wage numbers as well. So I, I think at this point, the economy uh, remains pretty on its solid footing um, at the moment. And also, if you, from a market perspective, we'll just talk about the inversion of the nominal curve. But if you look at the real yield curve, it remains at historical lows. And the curve itself is reasonably steep. That means that the market thinks that uh, the, the economy is continue to grow and continue to, to expand, and the inflation pressure that we have right now will moderate by itself. Uh, so overall, wise, I think at this point of time, the recession probability remains quite limited. Uh, Jenny, I want to dovetail now uh, to uh, China. Of course, it has a, a different set of issues. Uh, we've got a, a slowdown taking place, and we've got these different PMIs coming out. What's been your main takeaway from them? In China, you're absolutely right. China is at a very different economic cycle than the U.S. And at this point of time, I would say that any bad economic news is good policy news for the market. We see that China released surprisingly strong January, February economic data that keeps the central bank and central government from having more aggressive policy support. And then now we've seen the latest uh, PMI numbers being pretty weak um, and expectations actually is getting weaker as well. Uh, we could expect more and more aggressive uh, policy support to come in the near future. Uh, China's bond yield advantage seems to be dissipating. Jenny, are Chinese bonds still looking attractive? Yes. If you again, if you think about it, versus the U.S., the RMB, China's government bond remains attractive from a relative perspective. You are absolutely right. It has come down from a, from, from from its highs. But if you think about the, the different cycles we just talked about, China is on the easing bias, where the U.S. is definitely on a hiking bias. Now, this China, so China government, government bond still gives investors a really good diversification uh, away from the rising yield in the U.S.